you feel being here this Sunday? It's good. I like seeing people in person, so this is great. Good. And how do you feel about the spring? It's spring now. Uh, spring is great, like the weather, but the bugs, eh. <laughs> I feel good every time I can get here. Every time. I like spring. It brings you here every Sunday. It was a year ago this Sunday when we had the Journey of Faith building closed down for public gatherings. So it's ironic that we are still in that place of the building being closed. We're also still in this place of the church being open. Good morning, beloved. And how are you doing today? Welcome this Sunday morning to Journey of Faith Online Worship. And guess what? Guess what? I'm going to let you in on a little secret, okay? Don't tell anybody, all right? Well, actually, no. Tell everybody. Guess what today is? Today is still Easter. We are still in the season of Easter. How do you know? The lily and tulip have already said so. It's a little giveaway, but we're here on this second Sunday in the season of Easter. We gather on Sundays because of Easter. If you're a student of Scripture, you'll know in the Old Testament it was the seventh day, right? In creation, on the seventh day of creation, God rested. God set the seventh day aside as a holy day, a Sabbath day. Well, seventh day is Saturday. But what's going on? We're here on Sunday. Are our calendars off? No. As follow Jesus, we believe that a new Sabbath has now dawned, what is called the eighth day of creation, when God has brought forth this new covenant through God's son, Jesus. And so it is this Sunday morning, this Sabbath day, we set aside this time to gather, this time to pray this time to praise, this time to preach, this time to grow in our faith. So, beloved, get ready. I'm going to say those three miraculous words, those three words that rock the heavens and the earth. You ready? Jesus is risen. And you can just simply respond by saying, he is risen indeed. And then, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know it from last week, right? You ready? Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. And one more time so the world can hear us. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. So I'm so glad you're here. We are in our sermon and scripture series. I'll be preaching from in a moment. But until that sermonic time we're going to have a moment of prayer the reading of scripture and today's song uh, given to us again by cj is there is none like you there is none at all like the lord so if you would please pause with me if you would please take a breath with me to breathe and right now just fill your heart with gratitude just think of what you are thankful for today. I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful. I had a four-day vacation, y'all. I went away by myself. I love my wife and kids, but it was nice to not have to worry about what other people wanted to eat or people put on their pajamas or if the kids got the shower and bath. I just had to worry about me. So I got away four days. It was nice. I got my hair cut, you know, my Easter hair cut here. I got my fancy tie, right? I got a lot to be thankful for, just life today. So just breathe for a moment. Just think of something you're thankful for. Something right now. Fill your heart, your spirit of gratitude. And then let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another Sabbath day. Another day to rejoice and be glad. A moment, Lord, to lift up to you our praise and to again express to you our deepest sincere thankfulness and gratitude. Lord, we are so thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus. We're thankful for what happened on that first Easter 
and we embrace the message and power of Easter on this day in 2021. So bless us now by a measure of your spirit. Lord, speak to our hearts, minds, and souls today as we gather near and far to worship your name. We pray this and everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, so we're going to have a reading of scripture, our praise song, or anthem today, There Is None Like You, Lord, and then I'll be back uh, for preaching of today's message. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Journey. Today I'll be reading from the Gospel of Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that Jesus, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was sacrificed with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead in sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading. Amen.
the sermon for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Wait, did somebody say Easter? Jesus risen? Did somebody say he's risen indeed? Did I hear hallelujah? I think I did. Well, on this occasion, we're launching our new scripture and sermon series, which has an easy title, remember? Simply, Jesus is risen. So what? What does Easter mean for us, to us? See, Easter has been around for, let's just say, a little while. I mean, when you consider the keeping and marking of time itself, right, the scorecard of history, our dating is divided around the incarnation of God through Jesus. We have labeled time either B.C., before Christ, and the birth of Christ, A.D., Anno Domini, Latin for the year of the Lord. Now, there are some who have suggested using B.C.E. before the Common Era and C.E. Common Era, but it still doesn't take away the original nexus for the division of historical events, B.C., A.D. All history shaped around Jesus of Nazareth's arrival into the world. So if we just consider for a moment that biblical scholarship suggests that Jesus kicked off or launched his public ministry at the age of 30. And for perhaps three years, Jesus traveled the first century Palestinian countryside, preaching and teaching, healing, feeding, challenging, leading, and loving. And around the age of 33, the intent to silence his voice and terminate his mission, he was nailed to the cross and crucified by the powers of worldly empire. Yet God, early, can you say early with me? Early, on the first day of the week, as the sun crested over the horizon, God spoke, wake up, get up. Rise up, Jesus. Jesus was resurrected. The women left the tomb saying, he is risen. He is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Now, actually, I prefer you may notice this, just say Jesus. I say Jesus risen rather than Christ is risen. Not that either one is right or wrong. We're just, you know, to each their own. See, Jesus and I are kind of on a first-name basis. So let's just say Jesus rose from the dead in about 33 A.D. Just put a pin on the pages of history around 33 A.D. And now here we are, April 11th, 2021. Been 2,021 years approximately since the shift from B.C. to A.D. So this proclamation, this celestial shout that Jesus is risen, has been proclaimed for 1,988 years. 1,988 years of Easter Sundays since the first one. And all four Gospels paint an incredible picture of what happened that first Easter. The response to the resurrection by Mary Magdalene and the other female disciples who went from being mourners to messengers, who went from embalming a rotting corpse to proclaiming a risen Christ. And how the men disciples on the first Easter, inspired by those preaching sisters, moved from cowering in fear to courageously living their faith. For all of the followers of Jesus, their hope which died on Friday was recharged on Sunday. The first Easter. The first 
news sounding of the resurrection. That was for them, and that was back then. That was the first Easter, right? Again, around the year 33 AD. So what I want to know, what I want you to consider, what I want you to ponder and think about over these days and weeks of the Easter season is what does Easter mean for us and for right now? This is the 1998th Easter in the year 2021. So what? What does Easter mean to us? What does Easter mean for us? That's what we're looking at this time together. And first, I want to focus on what do these words what does resurrection mean in the face of death? What does Jesus living have to do with my death and dying? Death is a subject we are not very equipped to discuss. At least in my years of ministry, I found it quite difficult for families to have conversations around death. Even in f communities of faith, there seems to be a sense of trepidation whenever death is present or spoken of. You know, in some sense, we live in a death-denying culture. Heck, we don't even want to talk about getting old. We get mad at our bodies and embarrassed for the natural process of aging. Mad that my, th my hair is thinning out. Mad that skin is starting to show some wear and tear and some wrinkles. Mad that our body fat is holding a convention at our waistline. Did you know globally, we as human beings spend $191.5 billion a year on anti-aging products. And it's predicted that in the next 10 years, by 2030, we will spend $421 billion a year in anti-aging products. Just trying to show folks that we're not getting old. So how much do we wish to hide deny, ignore the aging process. And when we can't even speak about our bodies aging, we really can't talk about our bodies dying. Aging is difficult, but when it comes to death, whew, so often nothing. Silence, crickets. Somehow we may even deceive ourselves and trick ourselves to somehow believe we're going to get out of this life without going through death. And there are many preachers, I'm not one, but there are many preachers out there who will try to sell you on that reality only themselves to someday go the same way. So I don't want to talk about death because I might put it in the universe, it's already here. In our sacred writings today, what was read for us from the book of Romans, Paul does not hold his tongue or the quill he's writing with to pull back the veil on the topic of death. It's important to note something as we get into this lesson from Romans that it's the Gospels. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the report to us on the events of Jesus' life. There we learn his birth in Bethlehem, his baptism in the River Jordan, his directives and how we should live as his disciples to treat people the way you want to be treated. Jesus emphasized more the essence of relationships over rituals and regulations. To love God, love neighbor, and love yourself is at the center of Jesus teaching and our faith. That the way you treat the most vulnerable in society is reflection 
of how you treat and love your creator. So, you know, I, I wonder then sometimes, based upon what Jesus taught and how he lived, I wonder what happened to American Christianity. Do folks who said they love Jesus ever read the words of Jesus? The gospel report Jesus' miracles, the feeding of 5,000 people, the walking on water, the, the healing of those who are blind, crippled, deaf, mute, the resurrecting of the dead, and they all record his horrifying death in Jerusalem on the cross. But on the third day, he resurrected. The life, death, and resurrection told in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all told us about his life, the events of his life, death, and resurrection. But now this dude Paul shows up. And Paul took Jesus' teachings and fit them into a theological framework to give us meaning and understanding. This is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus did is what is reported in the Gospels. And then Paul says, and this is what it means for us now. The essence of Paul's framework was how we're liberated by grace through faith. We're set free by the power of God's grace. So today we're reading from the book of Romans, chapter 6. Paul is tackling the topic of dying and rising with Christ. He's speaking about Jesus' resurrection. And in these eight verses that we read today, Romans 6, verses 3 through 11, 12 times, okay, 12 times in eight verses, Paul mentions the word death, dead, or dying. 12 times in eight verses. You were baptized into his death. You are buried with him by baptism into death. Christ was raised from the dead. We've been united with him in a death like his. Whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, Christ being raised from the death, death no longer has dominion over him, which happens to be my favorite. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. Consider yourselves dead to sin. Man, Paul, that's a lot of death. Why are you trying to mess up my Easter joy? Why are you trying to kill the buzz, Paul? Baptized into death, death, die, dead. Paul can't speak resurrection, though, without talking about crucifixion. See, often we want the crown, but we don't want the cross. We want the hallelujah about eternal life, but not acknowledge death in this life. An important essence to our faith is the understanding death is just as much a part of Easter as life. The first Easter did not take place in the temple, but in a tomb. The angel was not seated in the sanctuary, but the cemetery. Easter Sunday does not negate, nullify, or neutralize the agony, pain, and suffering of Good Friday. Once the stone was rolled away, the grave clothes unwrapped, and the resurrection of life stepped out of the grave and set loose, it didn't mean the cross never happened. One of the telltale ways that Jesus was recognized by his disciples later was by his scars. When he appeared to his disciples, he showed them he showed to them, look, here are the holes in my hands and the cavities in my feet. And this is the gap in my side where they pierced me with a, a spear. Because Jesus died a real death. Jesus died a real death physically. And beloved, are you ready? We will too. There will come a day whether the effects of a grave disease or the long-term effects of gravity or sudden traumatic trouble to our body or the soul gradual process, death touches us all. And the season of Easter is the best time to talk about death. Now, often this second Sunday of Easter, we have our gift of life Sunday. And next year, I already know the perfect person for it didn't happen for this year. 
a chance for us to talk to our loved ones about the desires we share and what we're done after our death with our organs, how we can give to somebody else sustain the gift of life. In fact, I'm here today. I'm convinced I'm here today, though I don't know who my donor was, that almost 24 years ago, somebody shared, somebody talked to their family and said, if anything should ever happen to me, let someone else receive what I don't need anymore. So I'm here because someone was not afraid to talk about death. You know, I tell my wife, I share all the time, Michelle, when I die, because I'm going to die, if I die before you, cremate me, burn me up, take my ashes, spread them in the mountains of Pennsylvania, the ocean, at the Outer Banks, but save your money. You know, I plan my service. This is what I've like done. And if anyone sings, y'all need to hear this. If anyone sings, wind beneath my wings, I'm going to haunt everyone there. I'm not saying I don't like the song. I'm just saying I don't like the song. But don't put your money, I tell my wife, in the crib. Put it in the life of our kids. Now, perhaps that's it. Perhaps that's it. That's where death hangs heavy for us. See, maybe you, like me, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about me after my death. I know where I'll be. I'm certain where we'll be. We'll be with the Lord. I worry, though, about those who will still be here, about my family, my wife, my kids, my family. So I want to share in these same thoughts and concerns, I want you to hear something today, a particular verse which I repeat over and over again. Something Paul says that I just keep right here for me. It's in Romans chapter 6, verse 9, where Paul says, death no longer has dominion over him. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death no longer has dominion. Two things that jump out in that moment. The words, no longer. No longer speaks to reality that at one time, death did. Death did have control. Death did interrupt God's plan. Death had success in circumventing God's desire for creation's restoration. On Good Friday, death had its way to go against God's will for healing and wholeness. Death tried that God's way of equality and justice might be halted. And Jesus was the one who showed as the way, the truth, and the life that death you once did, but you no longer have that power. Now, death will mess up our plans. Death will interrupt our lives. Death will bring tremendous grief and pain into our lives. But we have to remember, death no longer. See, at some point, a healing it will arrive. Death no longer. At some point, why, I, it sounds like it's our grief series speaking to us again. But at some point, my pain will be turned into purpose. At some point, it will be recognized. It will be made known. It will be shouted from the rooftops that death no longer has dominion, that the grief and loss that have come from death have now been undone by the power of love and life. Death has a word, but God has the last word. Dominion means ruling, power, and sovereignty, the ability to act. Who's in charge? Death has no dominion. Death does not come at the end of life, but life comes at the end of death. God, through life, has the last word to be said. God has the last song to be sung. Death, yeah, you have a momentary presence, but not a lasting eternal one. Death no longer has dominion. Remind yourself of that. Remind ourselves of this understanding. There are things worse than dying. Things worse than dying a physical death. 
slavery, dehumanization, mistreatment, injustice, brutality, living your life caged by fear. These are worse than a physical death. You know, it, something that's far worse than what you could do to a bird isn't to kill the bird, but to clip its wings so it could not fly. The African-American spiritual old freedom understood this reality when it said, and before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Death has no dominion. And for the last promise, the loudest proclamation to be made is life. Indeed, Easter Sunday, does not erase Good Friday, but God through Easter uses evil to bring forth good, suffering to show us salvation, and God uses even death to bring forth life. For just as Paul in Romans chapter 6 names death throughout those eight verses we read, he also mentions where death ultimately leads to life, resurrection, this understanding of being raised up. Christ was raised from the dead. We walk in newness of life. We are united with him in a resurrection like his. We will also live with him, but the life he lives he lives to God, alive to God in Christ Jesus. The final word, the last act, that triumphant victor is life, which is why the reality is we are all going to die. But the question is, are we all going to live? Will we live the newness of life? Will we live? not after you've drawn your last breath, but with this breath. Will you live with that breath? Will you live not after our bodies have died, but will you live right now? Will you live through our baptism, through dying and rising, the washing and renewing we're all given in those waters? We were baptized into Jesus' death and also his resurrection. We can live. Easter invites us to live as Jesus lived, to live in the way that we love, to love God, to love neighbor, and to love ourselves. We can live today as Jesus lived, filled with hope and possibility. We can live as Jesus lived, not worrying about what other folks are thinking or saying or judging you, but live free to be you. We can live as Jesus lived, to laugh often and cherish every moment of life that we have here. We can live shouting the truth, shouting the eternal reality that Jesus is risen, which reminds us that death, you no longer have dominion here. For just as it's true now in Easter 2021, as it was in Easter number one, we can live as Christ has freed us to live. Jesus brings us through death and leads us to life. Through the cross, Jesus entered into death with us to be the way, the truth, and the life. Let me close with this. Uh, this coming August, my family and I, Michelle, myself, and the kids are, are returning to the Outer Banks, to North Carolina, to Nagsay. Uh, we went two years ago and loved it. Uh, planned on going back, but you know, COVID-19 changed a lot of plans in 2020. When we went last, in 2019, two years ago, on the beach, you know, the waves were crashing and you get the sense of the awesome power uh, of the Atlantic Ocean and just standing there seeing it. And Zania, my daughter, she jumped right in. She went right with me. We were riding the waves and body surfing. She was using our, our boogie board to go up and down. She was having the time of her life. But Zach, hmm, 
Zach was, I mean, he was younger. He was only about seven, and he was a little more apprehensive. He stood on the shore, and he got his feet wet. He got his ankles wet. He had his flowies on. He was ready to go. He had his goggles on. He wanted to go, but Zach was intimidated. He was scared by the waves and awestruck by the sound. He was afraid to go in those waters. So Zaniah, she came out of the water. She went over and she talked to him. Because I tried, he wouldn't listen to me. But she went over. She talked to him for a minute. Then I watched as she grabbed his hand. And by the hand, the two of them walked into the water. They went in the ocean. And they came out near me, and they faced down the waves, and together they rode the waves. And I was talking to them there, and I wondered, how? Zaniah, how'd you do it? How'd you get Zach in the ocean? You know what she said? Well, I just told Zach I would hold on to him, and I won't let go. But guess what Jesus did? Guess what Jesus did through the waters of baptism? Jesus goes in the waters of death. Jesus goes in that place of fear and that place of suffering that we don't want to go. And God transforms those waters to Jesus and turns into waters of life. And what Jesus tells us is that I'll be with you. I will hold you and I won't let you go. You know why? Because death no longer has dominion because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Live your life. Live your life. Live your life. Amen. All right, beloved, I hope that today's message, today's word, uplifted your soul. I hope the good news of Jesus' resurrection is one that continues to inspire us to live our lives without fear and filled with love and faith. And along with faith and love, I also pray for there to be peace. Peace within your heart, mind, and soul. Peace within you so you can share peace and bring peace into the world. Now, normally we would be together and we would share the peace by a handshake or an embrace. And perhaps soon, we'll see as the pandemic goes forward and we get closer, we'll be back in here someday to do it. But until then, from me to you, I extend to you the peace that passes all understanding, the peace of our Lord to be with you. And I invite you to please share God's peace in the manner in which you live and how you share all that God has given to us. So may the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. So a couple of things going on that you would have seen earlier uh, in what's going on Journey Faith. The Tuesday, Thursday Facebook Live devotional at 6 o'clock is now the Monday, Wednesday Facebook Live devotional. Prayer, scripture, meditation. All on this theme of Jesus risen, so what? What does that mean for us now? So you'll find me Mondays and Wednesdays at 6. You try to find me Tuesday and Thursday, won't be there. Actually, be a baseball practice for my son. So Mondays and Wednesdays, 6 to 6.15, tune in to Facebook Live, Journey Face page, Lord willing, and the creek it doesn't rise, I'll be there. Also then, we have um, our updated giving. First of all, thank you so much for everyone that gave for our ELCA World Hunger Appeal, money that goes to provide for those who struggle with just simple means of eating nutrition every day. What we receive from everyone was $2,110, $2,110 from you. So again, thank you everybody that just sent in your $40, a dollar a day during Lent. It all adds up. And so the church is gonna add 1,500 to that. So we'll be sending $3,610 to fight hunger, globally, nationally, and locally. But I'm gonna suggest the board, I'll talk to them. I'm gonna suggest we add another 390 uh, from the church and actually send $4,000, so we'll let you know. But God has been good to us, let's be good to one another, which is also demonstrated in how much you've given to support the work of the Lord here at Journey of Faith. We are actually, after Easter Sunday, we're $7,000 ahead of our goal. Again, incredible uh, exhibit of generosity and trust. So thank you everyone who's given. You also can give, you also can help to support the ministry here Give to us as we give to others. 
by clicking on Facebook. If you're watching, the top of the page, the donate button, you can give that way. Or you can go to our webpage, journey7902.org. There's a little tab up there that says giving. Just click on that and follow the instructions. Or if you're old like me, I still do it the old-fashioned way. I just write a check. Uh, you can send us a check or money order to 7902 Liberty Road. And that is Baltimore, Maryland, or Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21244. But again, from the bottom of my heart, from the depths of my soul, I'm just so grateful for you. Grateful to God and just so grateful for the generosity that is spilling out over uh, from this community of faith. All right, beloved. Well, there's no bunny costume this day, so we're going to end with prayer and our closing blessing. But I hope you're still tuned in. I hope you're still with me as we want to take this time to go to God in prayer. So once again, as we began, we will end. Once again, I invited you to start. I invite you to finish, to take a breath, to just breathe and be present in this moment, to live your life. Don't worry about tomorrow. Give thanks for today. Let us be free from the fear of death and dying and just live every day to its fullest. So take a breath of life with me. Take a breath and again, let us be thankful and let's focus in talking and listening to God right now. So, Lord God, again, we give you thanks this Easter Sunday, this Easter season, that we are being reminded and we are together remembering and recalling the greatest act in history, the moment where you truly showed the fullness of your grace and love through the resurrection of your son, Jesus, that even after the evil and violence visited upon him on Friday, Lord, you still showed up. You still chose for us to follow a path of love, a path of grace and mercy, to walk in faith every moment of life. So just ask and pray that the words of resurrection, the spirit and power of resurrection would be in each of us now. We continue, Lord, to pray for our world, for your whole global community. We pray, Lord, especially as we go through this pandemic and pray for the vaccine to be utilized. Pray for people to work and live in compassion with each other. We pray, Lord, for our nation, our state, and local leaders. Again, Lord, help all to serve for the purpose of serving you, and especially then to be with those who are most vulnerable among us. Help us, Lord, to have a heart filled with your spirit today. We pray for those impacted by climate change directly. We pray, Lord, for those who are visited with gun violence as this epidemic continues. And again, we pray that we could come together as your children for the safety and welfare and well-being of our children and look for ways, Lord, to limit all that happens with gun violence. Lord, today we ask and pray, continue to be with Journey of Faith, to bless this community, that truly it be a place anchored in your love and grace, that all who encounter us would leave knowing, experiencing the fullness of your presence. Lord, there are those who are among us, those we hold near and dear, and Lord, even ourselves in need of special prayer today. Although we all have places in our lives where we're broken and need to be healed and places that we're lost and need to be found. So, Lord, today in your presence, we name before you our own individual issues or concerns. Then we also place in your hands today, Lord, those who we know are in need of a double portion of your spirit. Lord, today we pray for joy and Monica Campbell, for Cheryl Cunningham, for Mark Felton and family, for Evelyn Ryans Dixon, for our bishops, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Bishop Bill Gould, for Hilda Fisher, for Pastor Chuck Horn, Pastor Lauren Kirschkar, and Pastor Sarah Meyer Flat, for Matthew McKenna, Ivan Rosa, for Clifton, Michelle, and Marquita Reed, for Roger Sauter, Nettie Scott, 
Andrea Simmons, for Robert and Deborah Stone and Dejana, for Carolyn Tyson, and for Mark Vernick, for all our teachers and children and administrators, all those involved for educating our children, for parents. And now, Lord God, for everything and for everyone that we have placed before you, either speaking out loud or meditating within our hearts, we place into your hands. We place into your care. We place into your power. Lord, we know that it is you who rule and reign supreme today in your grace and love. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, resurrected from the dead, living today for us and in us, with you and the Holy Spirit, as one God now and forever. And Lord, together now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I the king of the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, beloved. Well, I again hope you enjoyed today's service. I hope to see you Monday and Wednesday, 6 o'clock, Facebook Live. If not then, next Sunday we'll be right here again, same bat time, same bat channel for all my Batman fans from back in the day. But until you see me again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make her face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon your favor and grant you this day all power, all peace, all grace, and all love. In Jesus' name, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Now go and live in the power of the resurrection. Amen.